One of the most challenging tasks you perform regularly as a DevOps engineer is debugging issues in production. This is especially true if your environment is made up of multiple large-scale Kubernetes clusters. The larger the environment, the more complex it gets. A single microservices application, for example, can be spread out across multiple clusters. And this application may also depend on several other system services like storage, ingress, load balancers, routing, and network policies, to name just a few. So when there's a major production issue, visibility decreases simply due to the massive scale of data we might need to collect in order to successfully diagnose the issue. We find ourselves juggling multiple monitoring and observability tools to gather all of this data. We also need to take into account the fact that we are not always the owners of all the applications and services running in the cluster, which means we need to work in close collaboration with the owners of all affected applications while diagnosing an incident. Failure to do so effectively can result in misapplication of resources, leading to longer resolution times and longer outage periods. So it would make perfect sense that a tool that can consolidate monitoring and observability information in a single centralized location would be the best solution to the problem. And that is exactly what BotCube can do for your Kubernetes environment. BotCube is a collaborative troubleshooting platform for Kubernetes, which lets you interact with your clusters using a chat and collaboration tool like Slack or Microsoft Teams. You get to see real-time events from your clusters directly in your chat window and collaborate with your teammates in troubleshooting issues. Beyond just monitoring your clusters, you can easily take action in events like describing deployments and pods or inspecting logs of failing pods. You have full access to your favorite Kate tools like kubectl and helm directly within your chat window and are also able to add even more custom tools as plugins. So let us see how we can get BotCube running in your cluster and connect it to your Slack workspace. You can also check out the BotCube documentation for how to integrate with other chat platforms like Teams or Discord or Mattermost. So the first thing you will need to do is to create a Slack app, which you can do from the Slack app console. You can create an app using one of the app manifests provided in the official BotCube documentation. If you like, you can also edit the name and description in the manifest to match the name of your Kubernetes cluster. Once the app is installed, you can retrieve the bot token from the OAuth and permission section and also generate an app token for the app. We will require both the bot and app tokens in the next step, which is installing BotCube in our cluster. So basically, after we install the BotCube Helm repository and fetch the chart, we can go ahead and add our custom configuration values to the values.yaml file. I'll have the much detailed step-by-step -step instructions linked in the description below, as well as the full values file so that you can check it out and reproduce it in a similar setup in your own environment. And by the way, if you're enjoying the video and would like to see more Kubernetes related videos, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. It would really mean the world to me. So to install BotCube with Slack integration, we need to make sure that the socket Slack communication is enabled in the values file. We then set the channel name to where we added the BotCube bot. And then still under the socket Slack section, we can set the bot and app tokens we generated earlier. We ensure we at least have kubectl and helm enabled under k8 default tools in the executors section. This is the configuration which will enable us and botcube to issue kubectl commands in the cluster. Finally, we can set the cluster name under settings cluster name. So these values represent the minimum configuration required for our botcube instance to work. So we can now save the values.yaml file and do a helm install. And now we should have botcube running and ready to go. Once BotCube is installed, you can head over to the Kubernetes channel in your Slack window and you should be able to see that BotCube has started watching your cluster. And from here, you can interact with the cluster in read-only mode directly via the chat window. So by calling the Nebula West cluster using the add sign, we can list the nodes, we can list the namespaces, we can also list pods in any namespace. BotCube is also watching for events in the cluster. For example, I have here a deployment manifest that I can go ahead and apply in the default namespace. And if we head over back to the Slack window, we can see a notification has popped up about this new deployment. It recommends that we avoid using the latest tag on images. 
we have some quick actions that we can execute to further diagnose the issue. We can describe the pod or even take a look at the logs. Describing the pod indeed shows we are using the latest Nginx image in our deployment. So how does BotCube achieve all of this? What are sources, executors, actions, communications, and all of these BotCube components that we see in the values file? BotCube functions by integrating various components such as sources, executors, actions, and communications. Sources are essentially the origins from where the events are captured. This could be Kubernetes events or custom events. So when we configure a source, we are telling BotCube to watch the Kube API for specific events and report these events back to us via a communication. Communications refer to the channels through which BotCube interacts and notifies the users. This could be through platforms like Slack, Microsoft Teams, Mattermost, or Discord. Executors are plugins that enable BotCube or you, the user, to interact with the cluster by executing commands. So think of tools like kubectl or Helm. Actions are automated operations that BotCube performs in reaction to the events captured by the sources. This could range from sending notifications to correcting erroneous configurations automatically. BotCube also allows us to create aliases, which can make things easier when executing commands. To create aliases, we simply need to add them under the aliases section in the values file. So here we have a couple of examples like get pods, get deployments, get stateful sets, get nodes, and you can add as many as you wish, which will be globally accessible to the whole team. And then for this new configuration to take effect, we can do a Helm upgrade. If you have multiple clusters, you can simply add BotCube to each of them and create the corresponding Slack app in the Slack app console. You see here, I already created a Nebula East cluster as well, and I can simply run commands in the cluster by calling it first to the add sign. I will also receive event notifications for both clusters in the same channel. We can make our configuration a little more advanced by adding multiple channels with different source configurations. This will enable us to send only pertinent notifications only to the channels that need them. So first we have to create the channels in Slack and add the BotCube app as a member to all of the channels. Then in the values file under communications and socket Slack, we can duplicate the default channel a few times and rename the duplicates to create our new channels. For example, here I have created three additional channels, platform engineers, database admins, and support L2. After Helm upgrade, we should see the Slack app start operating in these new channels as well. At this point though, all the Slack channels will still receive all the event notifications, so we need a way to filter out notifications. The BotCube source configuration allows for including or excluding namespaces from receiving notification. So we can do that first by creating some custom sources. So in the values file under the sources section, we can duplicate the KH error events source a couple of times and rename to create two new sources. For example, I have here created the KH error events database and KH error events platform sources. These two new sources will only be used by the database admins and platform engineers respectively. So for these two new channels to receive event notifications from the new sources, we need to add the sources as bindings in the channel configurations. For the database admins and platform engineers channel, we will remove all other sources and set only the k error events database and k error events platform respectively. Once we have our sources properly configured, the second part of the configuration is to filter event notifications based on namespaces, and this will involve overriding some of the default BotCube configuration. Now, BotCube allows us to create multiple configuration files, which it then merges into a consolidated configuration at startup. You can read more about the merging strategy in the official documentation, but basically the priority will be given to the last rightmost file specified. Files with an underscore name prefix are always read last. Now, since I would like to override some of the settings specified in the default global config.yaml file, I can easily add a underscore custom config a.yaml file whose settings will be given preference over the global config. I can later add a custom config b.yaml file and so on and so forth to override previous settings. We can create the config map that will contain all of our custom configuration files. And to do that, we simply add the config map manifest under the extra objects section in the values file like this. 
in this configuration file i am overriding the default sources configuration so basically here i am making sure that the platform engineers only receive error notifications from the system namespaces like cube system metal lb system and ingress engine x likewise the database admins will only receive error notifications from the database namespaces like etcd and open search so now if we run helm upgrade we should have both cube restart with a new configuration so let us run some verification tests. Let's apply our Nginx test deployment to a few namespaces, default, etcd, OpenSearch, Cube system, Metal LB system, and Ingress Engine X and observe what happens. In the support L2 channel, we do not see any notifications coming through. In the database admins, we see only notifications for the etcd and open search namespaces. The same for the platform engineers channel, only events for the system namespaces, cube system, metal LB system, and ingress engine X are being streamed. Let us introduce some errors in the cluster and see what happens. I will edit our test deployment in the etcd and metal LB system namespaces and add a typo to the command. As you can see, the etcd namespace error is reported in the database admins channel, but not in the platform engineers channel. Since support L2 is also configured to watch errors in all namespaces, we can see the error event posted in that channel too. Likewise, we don't expect the error from the metal LB system namespace to appear in the database admins channel, but we do see it in the platform engineers channel. Now, we might want to perform some automated actions based on particular events, and we do this by enabling and configuring bot cube actions. In the values file under actions, you can see a few inbuilt actions we can enable. There's also in depth documentation on how you can create your own custom actions if you wish to customize this further. I'm going to enable the show logs on error action and make sure the sources Kate's error with the log events and Kate's error events are added under the bindings. This should automatically display the logs for the pod for events from these sources. Let us upgrade BotCube, delete and recreate our problem deployment and watch what happens. As you can see, we get a log output of command not found for the crashing engine X pod. So up until this point, we have mostly been looking at the configuration dealing with incoming notifications. But with BotCube's chat ops, we can go beyond just monitoring and also take action in events by issuing kubectl commands directly from the Slack chat window. And as you can imagine, it is quite important to have the right permission structure to safely enable this functionality. And the good thing is that BotCube also grants access to plugins using the Kubernetes role-based access controls. Uh, this means you can create a robust permission structure and have granular control over what actions are able to be executed with BotCube. So in order to create a basic permission structure for all our channels, under the extra objects section in the values file, I've created here two cluster roles, one read-only and the other full access. For the cluster role bindings and role bindings, I have set the kind under subjects to group and the name to the channel name I wish to bind a specific cluster role to. Creating a role binding instead of a cluster role binding and specifying the namespace will confine the cluster role permissions to that namespace. This is of course not the only way you can achieve a similar configuration. Since we are using Kubernetes RBAC, you can also check out the RBAC section in the official docs to see all the available configurable options. One last thing before we are ready to upgrade, we need to create a compatible executor. The default K8 default tools is also used by the actions component, which does not support the channel name RBAC policy. So in the values file under executors, I've created a new K8 default tools RBAC executor and set the appropriate RBAC configuration under context. Also, make sure you update the executors in the bindings for each channel under communications. So now I can run a Helm upgrade again to create the required permissions. Let us test things out to make sure that we have configured the correct channel permissions. From the support L2 channel, let us try to create a pod in the default namespace. As expected, this does not work as support L2 has no create permissions in any namespace. The only thing you can do from the support L2 channel is list pods. From the database admins channel, we can view all resources from the database namespaces, but also as expected, we cannot view resources from any other namespaces.
We can also verify the permissions for the platform engineers by running a few kubectl commands. I can list pods in all namespaces. I can create deployments in all namespaces, including database namespaces. Moving back over to the database admins channel, I can see the deployment in the etcd namespace that was just created by the platform engineers, which I should be able to delete. Database admins should not be able to create deployments in a forbidden namespace. Hopefully now you have a bit of an introduction on how you can set up monitoring and cluster chat ops with Botcube. You can check out the documentation for more information and configuration options. And also check out the link in the description to the GitHub repo with all the manifest files we used today, as well as a readme file with step-by-step -step instructions. Thank you again for watching, and if you'd like to support the channel, please like this video and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.